Well, good morning, folks. Peter's my name. Welcome to Star of the Sea <clears throat> on this Palm Sunday. If I've got asked you to just to turn to someone perhaps you don't know or someone you do know and say hi and welcome, because that's what our mission statement is, to be a welcoming community. <clears throat> Today is Palm, Palm Sunday and uh, it represents the passion of the Lord. No other Sunday in the liturgical year reflects such a dramatic contrast as today's Mass. What begins with song, a song of triumph, quickly shifts into remembrance of the Lord's passion. His royal entrance into, into the holy city of Jerusalem was also an entrance into the mystery of his shifting, suffering, death and resurrection. As we enter into this holy, holiest of weeks with Jesus, may our participation in each solemn litur liturgy draw us into deeper union with him and with one another. Please stand and join us in the opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you, and good morning. Well, normally on this Palm Sunday, the Palm Sunday, the Passion of our Lord, we gather out in this school oval there with the blessing of palms, the reading of the gospel of the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, and then we come in waving our palms. But because of COVID and the difficulty of, of being socially distanced, uh, we are, aren't able to do that today. So we do a little bit of it here in the church. So I hope you all have collected your palms on the way into the church. Have you not? You have them all there? Okay. Because my friends... Since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. So please hold up your branches as we ask God's blessing upon them. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ, the King in exaltation, may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. And if you keep your branches held.
have the short gospel story now of uh, Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. When they drew near to, to uh, Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord has need of it, and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at the door of uh, out in the open street, and they untied it. And those who stood there said to them, Why are you, What are you doing untying the colt? And they told him what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments on it, and he sat on it, and he sat upon it. And many spread their garments on the road, and others spread leafy branches which they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of our father David that is coming. Hosanna in the highest. And so let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our saviour to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. If you'd please sit. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue so that I may know how to reply to the wearied. He provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help so that I am untouched by the insults. So too, I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. The word of the Lord. The response, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord, let him save him. Let him release him if he is his friend. Response. Many dogs have surrounded me. A band of the wicked beset me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. O oh Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength make haste to help me. I will tell of your name to my brethren and praise you where they are assembled. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All sons of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, Israel's sons.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine, yet Christ did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the conditions of a slave and became as men are, and being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth, and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, so that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. today is the passion from Mark's gospel. It's very lengthy. If you might like to be seated, please. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the chief priests and scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by some trick and have him put to death. For they said, It must not be during the festivities, or there will be a disturbance among the people. Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. He was at dinner when a woman came in with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the ointment on his head. Some who were there said to one another indignantly, Why this waste of ointment? Ointment like this could have been sold for over 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they were angry with her. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why are you upsetting her? What she has done for me is one of the good works. You have the poor with you always, and you can be kind to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what was in her power to do. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. I tell you solemnly, wherever throughout all the world the good news is proclaimed, what she has done will be told also in remembrance of her. Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, <clears throat> approached the pr chief priests with an offer to hand Jesus over to them. They were delighted to hear it, and they promised to give him money, and he looked for a way of betraying him when the opportunity should occur. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, his disciples said to him, where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and you will meet a man carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him, and say to the owner of the house which he enters, The master says, Where is my dining room in which I can eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room furnished with couches all prepared. 
make the preparations for us there. The disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, he arrived with the twelve. And while they were at table eating, Jesus said, I tell you solemnly, one of you is about to betray me, one of you eating with me. They were distressed and asked him one after another, Not I, surely. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping into the same dish with me. Yes, the Son of Man is going to his fate, as the scriptures say he will. But alas for that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Better for that man if he had never been born. And as they were eating, he took some bread. And when he had said the blessing, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he returned thanks, he gave it to them, and all drank from it, and he said to them, This is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which is to be poured out for many. I tell you solemnly, I shall not drink any more wine until the day I drink the new wine in the kingdom of God. After the psalms had been sung, they left for the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all lose faith, for the scripture says, I shall strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. However, after my resurrection, I shall go before you to Galilee. And Peter said, Even if all lose faith, I will not. And Jesus said to him, I tell you solemnly, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will have disowned me three times. But he repeated still more earnestly, If I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And they all said the same thing. They came to a small estate called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Stay here while I pray. Then he took Peter and James and John with him, and a sudden fear came over him and great distress. And he said to them, My soul is sorrowful to the point of death. Wait here and keep awake. And going on a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, If it were possible, this hour might pass him by. He said, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup away from me, but let us be as you, not I, would have it. He came back and he found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Had you not the strength to keep awake for one hour? You should be awake and praying not to be put to the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away and prayed, saying the same words, and once more he came back and found them sleeping. Their eyes were so heavy, and they could find no answer for him. He came back a third time and said to them, You can sleep on now and take your rest. It is all over. The hour has come. Now the Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us go. My betrayer is close at hand already. Even while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came up with a number of men armed with swords and clubs sent by the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the trader had arranged to signal with the, a signal with them, and he had said, The one I kiss, he is the man. Take him in charge, and see he is well guarded when you lead him away. So when the trader came, he went straight up to Jesus and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The others seized him and took him in charge. Then one of the standbyers drew his sword and struck out at the high priest's servant and cut off his ear. Then Jesus spoke. Am I a brigand that you had to set out to capture me with swords and clubs? I was among you teaching in the temple day after day and you never laid hands on me. But this is to fulfill the scriptures. And they all deserted him and ran away. A young man who followed him had nothing on but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the cloth in their hands and ran away naked. They led Jesus off to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and scribes assembled there. Peter had followed him at a distance, 
right into the high priest's palace and was sitting with the attendants, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus on which they might pass the death sentence, but they could not find any. Several, indeed, brought false evidence against him, but their evidence was conflicting. Some stood up and submitted this false evidence against him. We heard him say, I'm going to destroy this temple made by human hands and in three days build another not made by human hands. But even on this point, their evidence was conflicting. The high priest then stood up before the whole assembly and put this question to Jesus. Have you no answer to that? What is this evidence these men are bringing against you? But he was silent and made no answer at all. The high priest put a second question to him. Are you the Christ, the son of the blessed one? And Jesus said, I am, and you will see the son of man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his robes and said, What need of witnesses have we now? You heard the blasphemy. What is your finding? And they all gave their verdict. He deserved to die. Some of them started spitting at him and blindfolding him, began hitting him with their fists and shouting, Play the prophet! And the attendants rained blows on him. When Peter was down below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's servant, servant girls came up. She saw Peter warming himself there, stared at him and said, You too were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know. I do not understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. The servant girl saw him again and started telling the bystanders, This fellow is one of them. But he again denied it. A little later, the bystanders themselves said to Peter, You are one of them for sure. Why? You are a Galilean. But he started calling curses on himself and swearing, I do not know the man you speak of. And at that moment, the cock crew for the second time. And Peter recalled how Jesus had said to him, Before the crock crows twice, you will have disowned me three times. And he burst into tears. First thing in the morning, the chief priests, together with the elders and scribes, in short, the whole Sanhedrin had their plan ready. They had Jesus bound and took him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, It is you who say it. And the chief priests brought many accusations against him. Pilate questioned him again. Have you no reply at all? See how many accusations they are bringing against you. But to Pilate's amazement, Jesus made no further reply. At festival time, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone they asked for. Now a man called Barabbas was then in prison with the rioters who had committed murder during the uprising. When the crowds went up and began to ask Pilate the customary favour, Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realised it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over. The chief priests, however, had incited the crowd to demand that he should release Barabbas for them instead. Then, then Pilate spoke again. But in that case, what am I to do with the man you call king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked again them, Why, what harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! So Pilate, anxious to placate the crowd, released Bar Barabbas for them and having ordered Jesus to be scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away to the inner part of the palace, that is the praetorium, and called the whole cohort together. 
They dressed him up in purple, twisted some thorns into a crown and put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed and spat on him. And they went down on their knees to do him homage. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the purple and dressed him in his own clothes. They led him out to crucify him. They enlisted a passerby, a Simon of Cyrene, father of Alexander and Rufus, who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. They brought Jesus to the palace, to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he refused it. Then they crucified him and shed out his clothing, casting lots to decide what each should get. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The inscription giving the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And they crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. The passerbyers jeered at him they shook their heads and said, Aha, so you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Then save yourself, come down from the cross. The chief priests and the scribes mocked him among themselves in the same way. They said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now for us to see it and believe. Even those who were crucified with him taunted him. When the sixth hour came, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. This means, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood by heard this, they said, Listen. He is calling on Elijah. Someone ran and soaked a sponge in vinegar and putting it on the reed, gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait and see if Elijah will come to take him down. But Jesus gave a, lo gave a loud cry and breathed his last. If you'd please kneel. Let us stand. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The centurion who was standing in front of him had seen how he died and he said, In truth, this man was the son of God. There were some women watching from a distance. Among them were Mary of Magdala, Mary, who was the mother of James the Younger, and Josette and Salome. These used to follow him and look after him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women there who had come up to Jerusalem with him. It was now evening, and since it was preparation day, that is the vigil of the Sabbath, there came Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who himself lived in hope of seeing the kingdom of God. And he boldly went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate, astonished that he should have died so soon, summoned the centurion and inquired if he, had already, if he was already dead. Having been assured of this by the centurion, he granted the corpse to Joseph, who brought a shroud took Jesus down from the cross, wrapped him in the shroud, and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary of Magdala and Mary the mother of Yosset 
were watching and took note of where he was laid. If you'd like to be seated now, please. On Palm Sunday each year, or Palm Sunday of the Passion of our Lord, it gives us an overview of the whole of, of Holy Week. And it's an extraordinary week, not only for us, but what an extraordinary week in the, in the life of Jesus. Early in the week, he was welcomed into Jerusalem. The people were so glad to welcome him. They placed their cloaks on the ground for him to ride over. They cut down branches and waved them, so happy they were that this wonderful person had come into their midst. And yet a few days later, by the end of the week, the same people who had previously called out, Hosanna, Hosanna, they were the ones calling out, crucify him, crucify him. How can people change so quickly? We can be very influenced by other people and most of us are only too happy to listen to bad news and to give voice to it. It's a little bit of a story of us. You know, we come to church and we listen to Jesus telling us of his great love for us. We walk outside the church and how long is it before we're unkind to somebody we say something that's cruel and judgmental. We show no compassion, no care. We once again go back to our selfish ways. So it's not only people in that life of Jesus who change so quickly, so too do all of us. There's so much good in everyone, and yet in all of us there's a little bit of evil still lurking that sometimes comes forth and gives voice. And we know that's because we're sinful people. And Jesus died for us, sinners though we be. And he didn't only give his life for us when we're good, but he also gave his life for us when we're not so good, when we're bad. He loves us when we're good and when we're bad that he loves us so much that he gives his life for us, sinful though we be. And it really is an extraordinary week, the spiritual week, where we're invited to walk with Jesus from this triumph, his entry into Jerusalem, through the Last Supper, the agony in the garden, and then on that terrible road to Calvary where he died in love for us. He didn't only suffer physical torment, but he'd been deserted by those closest to him. He'd been deserted by Peter, who said, look, all others may desert you, but never, never will I. And then Judas, of course, he was only too happy to sell Jesus out and betray him. Then you have the crowd calling for his crucifixion. You have the soldiers carrying out that dreadful sentence. And yet when we stop and, and look at all of these people, I'm sure we can see a little bit of them in all of us. 
how we turn our back on people when they need us. People who have hurt us once, never will we forgive them. Never can things be the same between us. Never can we heal the hurt that we've experienced. I think as we journey through this week, it's wonderful if we just don't stop here and say, look, I'll come Easter Sunday. But if we really make every effort to walk through all of these very important stages of the final week of Jesus' life, particularly these last three days, beginning with the Last Supper through the Crucifixion, Good Friday, through to the great feast of the of the resurrection at the Easter Vigil. It's called a Holy Week. Let's do our best to make it a Holy Week for, for us. And may it be transformative in the life that we're leading, that we do renew our efforts to respond to the love that Jesus shows for us as he accepted his death death on a cross. Well, let's all stand together now as we profess our faith, as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Brothers and sisters, so let us now make our prayers before God, the Father of our Saviour. That through compassion and self-giving, Christians everywhere will follow the suffering, death and resurrection of Christ during Holy Week. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are unjustly condemned may live in the truth and trust in the hope that they are favored in the Lord's eyes. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians may embrace the sacredness of Holy Week with a commitment to repent of their sins and strive for true holiness in Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who deny Christ or live with spiritual distress may become faithful witness of Jesus' love for all humanity. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will be shown mercy and compassion Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died will live forever with Christ Jesus, especially Isabel Barcenas and Miguel Akatakutan. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pause now as we pray for our own special intentions. God our Father, you gave us your Son as life for the world. Hear our prayers and help us to unite ourselves with the passion of your Son and so rise to new life with you. And we make our prayer through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual bread. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. And we pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Mark, our Archbishop, Ken, his assistant bishop, with the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her blessed spouse and Joseph, the blessed apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my son shall be healed.
This evening we're invited to gather at St Paul's Anglican Church down towards the point to gather together with the other Christian brothers and sisters of different Christian uh, traditions, the Anglicans, the Uniting Church and the Lutheran Church to uh, celebrate Palm Sunday together with an evening of reflection, of readings, hymns, time for contemplation as together we journey into the beginning of this holiest of holy weeks. So that's seven o'clock down in St Paul's Anglican Church. Tomorrow evening here we have Mass of Reconciliation at 7pm. So I do invite you to come along as we prepare for the great events of this week through spending time in asking God to be with us and bring healing and forgiveness. Thursday we have the celebration of the Lord's Passion, 7.30pm on Thursday night, so there'll be no Thursday morning Mass. There can't be a Thursday morning Mass because we have the Mass of the, uh, the uh, celebration of the institution of the Eucharist on uh, Thursday night. Then Good Friday, we have the stations here in the church this year at 10 o'clock, and then the uh, Passion of Our Lord, 3 p.m. Then the Easter Vigil, a little bit of a different time setting because it needs to be dark, and so the Easter Vigil will commence at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. for the Easter Vigil, Mass is on, Easter Sunday, as normal, 7 a.m. and 8.30. So look forward to journeying together through the whole of this holy week. So let's stand together now as we pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So thanks very much, everybody, once again. Thanks very much to our choir, those who do the overheads. Uh, thanks very much to Rashid for making up all the beautiful little palms that take home and put in a prominent place to... Uh, stay with you during this week and also during this year. And so the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we go to announce the Gospel of the Lord.